been noticing the rainbow wall art decor pretty much all over the place. I did a larger wall art where I did something similar, but I wanted to do it on a little bit smaller scale with items from the Dollar Tree. I picked up foam board and I also picked up three things of Dollar Tree spackling. They sell this in kind of like their tool section at Dollar Tree. I'm also gonna be using a trowel. If you don't have one on hand, you can grab them at like Lowe's or Home Depot. I first started by finding the center point in my foam board and making a mark for that. Next, to create a rainbow, I had to figure out the center point to where my top portion was gonna start forming. So I measured up where I wanted that to take place and I put a mark in the middle. Then I needed to create that half circle top of the rainbow. So I just tied a string onto a pin and then I used another pin that would reach out to the edge. And then I just kind of did a windshield wiper motion to create that top portion. I cut this out with regular scissors. You could also use an X-Acto knife, but I feel like I never have an X-Acto knife on hand. Does anybody else feel that way? I just went in with my scissors and cut it out. So next up is the fun part. I'm gonna start adding the spackling on. Now you don't wanna use your trowel here. You, you just want to use any kind of scraper. You could use just a plastic one that you had on hand. Dollar Tree sells these as well. You wanna get the spackling just as even as possible on your entire piece. And then I'm also gonna make sure I have some spackling on the edges. Now this next part may seem intimidating, but it was actually really easy to do. So I'm gonna put my trowel where I want it to start. And I'm gonna make sure that I don't go any farther than that center portion where I was going to start my trowel. I'm just going to push down and draw a straight line up to the top. Once I get to my curve section, I'm just going to curve around and then I'll continue down until I get completely off my board. That's it, that's all there is to this. Now you are probably gonna have to let it dry overnight, that's what I did. Now from here you could leave it as is, which is what I did, or you could paint it. It's totally personal preference. Here's how this rainbow spackling wall art turned out. It would also probably be cool if maybe you just painted the top portion of it, but either way, I wanted to leave mine really neutral because that's what I've been seeing in high-end decor. This time of year, Dollar Tree has out all of their new organization. I came across this container. I think it was meant to be a trash can, but I really liked the rattan around it and it felt like a planter to me. So I started by spraying it with two coats of a black spray paint. I really wanted that detailing to show up because I've been noticing in like Pottery Barn and other high-end sites, a lot of black planters where they use a lot of contrasting colors to give it a little bit of distressing. I'm gonna be using a white and gray chalk paint by Waverly for this project. I'm gonna come in with my foam brush and really you wanna use as little paint as possible. So get a little bit of paint on your foam brush and then wipe it off. You don't want a lot here. And you're just gonna lightly put it onto your piece. And then I even went in with a paper towel and wiped off excess. Now you can also go in with that gray color to kind of tone down if you feel like you put on too much white. You could also add some additional black, but I just kind of added it until I felt like I was happy with it. I really didn't add that much paint at all. I found this really inexpensive plant from Ikea for $12.99 and I'm gonna add that into my planter. Here's how it looks sitting out in my living room. I found this basket at Walmart and I really wanted to do an upscale DIY on it. When I was at Five Below, I found these really cool pieces that I thought would make perfect handles. So we're combining Walmart and Five Below for this DIY. I love this box, I think it looks so high end. So I'm gonna use my half circle beads and I'm gonna measure to get the center so I can add a handle to the top of here. 
I'm gonna measure exactly where I want my beads and then I'm gonna hot glue them in place. Next, I'm gonna add some E6000 to the top and hot glue to put on my wood handle. I just love the rustic look of this. And then to give it a little bit something extra, I grabbed some twine and I wrapped the twine around the handles right where the wood bead was, probably about three times. Then I tied it off in the back and I hot glued it in place. And I repeated this on the other side as well. This was a really simple DIY, but I think it changed the look of this piece and it would be great to sit on your coffee table to put remotes in. I absolutely love going to the thrift store and when I find a piece of furniture and I see it and I'm like, I know exactly what I'm gonna do with that, I get really excited. And that happened when I spotted this desk at the thrift store. I thought it was really cool on the side and the best part is it was only $20. I have this little alcove area that I really wanted a desk for. I've been searching around for something small and this was the perfect price. I really liked the wood color, so I didn't want to change that up, but I did want to put something on the top. You can see on the side of the desk, there's a vertical lines. I wanted to continue those lines up to the top by just bringing them up. So I measured how far apart those vertical lines were, and they were about eight inches. I decided I was going to create kind of like a table runner along the top with paint and stencils. I measured six inches on each side and then I added in some frog painters tape to just mark those lines. Once I had three marks, I took a long piece of my painters tape and put it so that it was nice and straight. And I repeated that on the other side. Now, one of my tricks for getting really affordable paint is to buy it in paint samples. Paint samples are usually really inexpensive and you can have them made up any color that you want. I'm gonna use one of my blue paint samples and paint in the middle. And I'm gonna do two coats of paint. I wanted to create a stencil to go along the top, so I needed to use my Cricut to cut it out. Now for this desk stencil, I went with a stencil that was already created in Design Space. I went in and I sized that stencil to the correct size that I wanted it to be, and then I duplicated it so I would have a couple of stencils. I ended up cutting out four of these stencils. Once you have your design the way you like it, you can send it to cut. Now the machine that I'm using is the Cricut Explore 3. This is one of Cricut's new newest machines. I have to say the Cricut Explore 3 is a pretty awesome machine. It cuts hundreds of different materials. It cuts about two times faster than normal Cricut machines. It also is compatible with smart materials. I feel like Cricut did a really good job upgrading this machine because when I cut out materials, they're super accurate. Once my stencil was cut out, I weeded it out. Now when your paint is completely dry, then you can add your stencil on, and I'm just gonna start on one end and put it down, and then I'm gonna use Waverly White chalk paint and a foam brush, and I'll just stipple on the paint. Now I don't wait for the paint to dry, I immediately pull the stencil up. I feel like this helps with lines and making sure it looks nice and crisp. And then I'm going to continue by putting another stencil down. I'm gonna try my best to line it up so it goes in a consecutive line. Now one of the reasons I like using these Cricut stencils is I appreciate the sticky on the back. That really helps whenever you're doing a stencil to not have that bleed through underneath with your paint. Now I'll continue adding my stencils and adding my paint till I get to the end of my project. This thrifted desk has totally been transformed. It's now personalized and I think it's gonna be perfect in my space. Oh my goodness, look at this organizer for $14. 
Oh, I love that. Oh my gosh, and I love this blue one. These are so pretty, you guys. I have a problem. I buy too many organizers. I need to just put it back. <laughs> it comes in a smaller version as well. I want these so bad. We're gonna figure out DIYs for these so I can get them both. So I'm starting with the larger basket and my idea here was to create a dog bed. So I started by measuring in on each side about four inches. Then I came in with a hacksaw and I just sawed off that wood piece. Then I came in and cut the macrame. I tried to cut it right where the knots were so that it would still hold in place. Then on the edges, I burned the edges so it wouldn't have that frayed look. And a lot of times when you burn the edges, it keeps them from fraying. With the bottom pieces, I undid some of the knots and then I hot glued the pieces down. For the exposed wood edges, I just started in the middle with a little bit of hot glue and some of the macrame that I cut off and I just started to create a circle and wrapped it around until it met up with the other macrame. I repeated these steps on the other side. I was so excited to find this dog bed for only $5 at Five Below and it fit perfectly. Moose, what are you doing to your bed? <laughs> Do you like it? You want your bed upside down? I think he thinks it's a toy. You got it out. Look at you, you got your bed out. Good job. Now with the second smaller basket, I decided to make a planter. I added some twine to all four edges. With the twine, I just tied it into three strong knots. I cut off the extra piece of twine. Then I used my hexagon beads. I'll link those down below for you guys. And I just put three hexagon beads on each of the sides. Once I got all my beads on, I pulled all of the strings up and then I just tied them in place at the top, it, just in a regular knot. I cut off the excess string. From there, I found some of my hanging plants. These are from Ikea, but I've seen them at Five Below and a bunch of different stores now. So I used three of the hanging plants, but you could use anything that you like for this. And here's how it turned out and how it looks hung up. So if you guys love watching DIYs and you're thinking, you know what, I wish Liz would post more videos, I have the answer for you. I've created a second channel here on YouTube called Liz Fenwick Daily, where I'm uploading daily videos. Now these videos are short DIYs. They're between like three and five minutes. So if you wanna get more DIYs, go check out Liz Fenwick Daily and subscribe to that channel so you'll get a new video in your feed every day. I'll also put a link to this channel down in the description box if you're looking for it. I love this little wood incense bowl. How much is it? Five dollars. So you may be wondering what I'm doing with the dog bowl and all these different components. So I removed all of the stickers. Then I found this scrap planter that I had from a succulent from Dollar Tree. I'm going to add hot glue in E6000 and put this on the inside of my dog bowl. Next, I spray painted the bottom and the top of this bowl with a flat white spray paint.
Once it had a chance to dry, I put a scrap piece inside of this bowl so I didn't get anything on the inside portion. I just wanted to concentrate my next step on the outside. So I have some Dollar Tree spackling that I'm gonna add to a bowl. I also have some Dollar Tree white acrylic paint that I'm going to mix in because I, when the spackling dries, I want it to be this white color. That's an easy way to not have that step where you have to paint it after you're done. I added spackling to the outside layer of my bowl. I wanted to just concentrate on getting quite a bit of product on there. Next, I grabbed a trowel. This is used in tiling, and I'm just going to simply create lines that go straight down on my bowl. I wasn't concerned about them being perfect. I just wanted to give it texture and dimension. So I did this all the way around my bowl. I scraped off the bottom if there was any excess left on there, and then I let this dry completely. So after my bowl had a chance to dry, I'm gonna E6000 that wood bowl that I picked up at Five Below to the top here. I created a cute little tray that you could keep out in your kitchen, on your nightstand, in your bathroom to hold your everyday essentials. Next, I'm gonna be creating a decorative accent. All you're going to need are some foam balls. I got two different sizes from Dollar Tree, and also you're gonna need some nautical rope. Now, I buy my nautical rope off of Amazon in a big spool. It's also available at Dollar Tree, so whichever works best for you, I'll put the link to the one I buy in the description box as well. So this is a really easy project to do. You're gonna start by hot gluing your foam ball and wrapping your nautical rope around. You're gonna do this till you get to the other side. Now it's okay if you leave a little bit of an opening on either side. Now when I did the first one, I realized I probably left a little bit too much of an opening, so I added some additional nautical rope to that one. I'm going to wrap the nautical rope going the other direction, making sure that I cover up that white space that I had on either one. So I'm just gonna wrap until I've covered the entire foam ball, and then I'll cut it off and hot glue it in place. I'm gonna repeat those same steps to create the second smaller foam ball. Now, I just created two. You could do all five or you know, however many you want for your project, but they look great as a little accent sitting out in your decor. Okay, so this copper table is definitely new. It's $5. I think it's really cool. I definitely think I could come up with a DIY for this. So I'm gonna grab one of these. When I picked up this copper table, I knew I wanted to make it into a raised table for my coffee table. So I took it out of the packaging to kind of see what I was working with. Now the legs are not attached, but there's three pieces on the back that I knew I was gonna to have to take care of. So I went outside with my angle grinder to take the pieces off of the copper tray. This was really fun to do and only took me a couple of minutes. I had this piece of scrap wood in my garage, so I just stained it a darker color, and then I'm going to cut it in half so it's a little bit smaller and manageable for a tray. Now to attach the wood block to my tray, I had this wood glue that I wanted to try out, but I was a little worried that it wasn't gonna work well, so I added some E6000 on as well. You could always mix and match glues. I'm gonna place the copper tray in the center, and then I decided I would flip it over and let it sit overnight to completely dry. And here's how I styled it on my coffee table. So 
So these wall art pieces on their website were $450 each. We're gonna put it together for a fraction of that. I found these frames at Hobby Lobby for only $11. They were 40% off and they were the size that I needed them to be. I just needed to update them a little bit. So I picked up three of these. I'm gonna tape off the frames, then I'm going to paint the interior, which is already white, but it's not a solid white. I'm gonna use the sample white paint to paint the base white. Now to create a textured gold look to my frames, I'm going to be using some gold rub and buff and add that on with a foam brush. I'm gonna repeat these steps for all three of my frames. I picked up some watercolor paper and I kind of cheated and made it in the size that I needed to use for these frames. And then I also grabbed some watercolors off of Amazon. I will link those below if you're interested in them, but I found that Amazon had the best deal. I wanna use this wall art at the lake, so I really wanted to use some green and blue colors in my painting. Now there's really no right or wrong way to do this. And in fact, I ended up repeating and changing this about three times, but the key is to just add in different colors of paint and also adding in water gives it that nice kind of flowy effect. So I went through and I created three different paintings and I felt like they were just a little too light. I wanted it to be more saturated and I wanted more color. So once they were dry, I went back in and I added in more paint. You can easily do that. I kept kind of the same colors. Like I had one that was blue, I had one that was more neutral and yellows, and then I had one that was green. Now, after I painted them the second time, I liked the colors better, but I wasn't happy with the design. I kind of just did a real basic design. So I went back in a third time and made almost more of like a swirl design, and I liked that so much better. So that's my tip. If you're not happy with something you created, just keep going until you like the way it looks. I added E6000 to the back of my watercolors. So to attach my watercolors to the frames that I had created, I decided that I wanted them to be a little bit off center and I was going to lay them on their sides just to make it a little bit more different, a little bit more interesting. Now to hold them down flat while they had a chance to dry, I added some books to just have a hard surface so that they could dry overnight. Like I said earlier, I decided to hang them sideways. I added them to my wall and I just love the way they turned out.
Do you guys have any of these brewmate or koozies just kind of hanging around your house? I want to give you an option to make them look super cute for the summer months and really this took me no time at all. Now one of the cool things about the Cricut Design Space is they have a lot of different images to choose from. So I went into the images and I love doing it on my phone. Honestly, I feel like it's easier than doing it on my desktop and I pulled up daisies, flowers until I found a design that I liked. Then once I pull them in, I can duplicate them. I can size them to the correct size that I wanted them to be. I also pulled in some leaf patterns. I sent those to cut on my Cricut Explore 3 with some white permanent vinyl. Once they were done cutting, I weeded them out. And then I just used some transfer tape and put that down. You wanna make sure that you rub your transfer tape really well, then you pull off the backing. Then I just simply placed them around my brewmate koozie and I didn't have a plan for this. I just kind of put them on until I was happy with the design. And this took this ordinary koozie and made it super cute. You guys have to try this. This is such a fun way to personalize your koozies or cups around your house. Lately, I've been seeing a lot of paper mache bowls in high-end decor, and I wanted to try to recreate one on my own. So for this project, I'm gonna be using craft paper. I'm gonna start by cutting my craft paper down in strips. So I got a large roll from Dollar Tree, and I'm just gonna fold it over until I can cut it into smaller strips. Now, don't worry if your strips aren't perfect. They do not need to be by any means. You're also going to need some sort of bowl or shape to mold your paper mache around. So I just grabbed this plastic bowl from Amazon. I'm gonna wrap it with a trash bag and then tape it in place. Next, I'm gonna create my paper mache paste. So I'm gonna be mixing flour with water. You want your paste to be kind of be a thin consistency so that it'll hold up as a paste. Next, I'm gonna start by putting my strips onto my bowl. So I will dip them into the paste. Then I'm gonna wring off any excess paste and I'll add it to the outside of my bowl. I started down at the base and then I kind of wrapped them around the edges and then kind of finished it off at the top. Now with all paper mache, you're gonna have to let it dry overnight before you see how it turned out. I did realize that once it dried, it was a little too white, like I saw too much of the flower and I wanted it to have more of that brown color. So I went back in and added another layer to the outside. This doesn't hurt it at all. It's just gonna actually make it more sturdy. and then I'll let that dry for another night. Once that dries, I can remove the bowl from the inside. To fill it, I just put some filler down at the base. You can use sacks of any kind, and then I'm gonna top it off with some Dollar Tree moss. And here's how my paper mache bowl turned out. seven dollars for this this looks like pottery barn it's got this really like in basket weave detail on it you could put this in your well they're saying a medium canister this would be great for your bathroom kitchen or just sitting out as like a decorative item i'm getting this I wanted to add a knob to the top of my canister, so I had this hexagon bead that I thought would be perfect for it, and so I'm just going to start by adding wood filler to the hole on the bead because I didn't want that to show through. So I'm just going to build up the wood filler. Once that has a chance to dry, I'm going to come back in and just sand it down with some sandpaper. Like a
Now I wasn't sure if I wanted the hexagon knob or if I wanted to go more traditional. So I actually spray painted two of the knobs. So I went in and sprayed them both with two coats of a white matte spray paint. In the end, I decided to go with the hexagon bead. I just added it to the top of my container with some clear Gorilla Glue. This was a quick DIY, but I think it added a little bit extra to this canister. And I wanted to show you guys how beads are a very simple, inexpensive thing you can use to create knobs. So you don't always have to spend a ton of money to create knobs, especially in a situation like this, where it's not being pulled on a cabinet. It's just sitting decoratively on top of this canister. On the side of my kitchen cabinets, I have a couple of cutting boards that are over there. They're kind of like a medium stain cutting board color. And I've been noticing a lot more darker stains and black stains. So I wanted to add a cutting board that was a little bit heavier and darker. So I found this cutting board at Ikea. It's really affordably priced and I'm gonna be using the darkest stain color I have. Now to stain an item, what I like to do is just use a foam brush and I'm going to paint it onto my piece and I'll immediately come in, take the stain off with a paper towel. Now, since I wanted this stain to be really dark, I decided to actually do two coats. So I added some additional stain to it and wiped it off with a paper towel. To hang it on the side of my cabinets, I'm gonna add some twine to it. I'm just gonna cut some twine off and tie it at the top. And here's how it looks on the side of my kitchen cabinets. Now these would also really be great in a grouping sitting out on like the backsplash of your counters as well. So if you guys are new to my channel, you may not know that I do live videos on Amazon once a week. It's a lot of fun and I'm just sharing like my favorite DIY, fashion, kitchen, home supplies over on my live videos. If you haven't seen Amazon Lives, I'll put the link to my live videos down in the description box. You can go check it out. You could also follow me on Amazon. You'll get notified anytime that I go live. It's a lot of fun, so I hope you'll check it out. I found this next wall art piece and it was so incredibly overpriced, but honestly so simple and something I knew that I could recreate. This wall art was over $3,000. So I thought, let's go ahead and recreate it. I found a pack of canvases at Five Below that I picked up for $5. Now for this project, you're just going to need some macrame cord and some nautical rope. I'm gonna link both of the ones that I use on a regular basis in the description box below. Now on each of my canvas, I marked where I wanted the center strip to be on both of the canvases. I started with one of my yarns and I hot glued it to the back and then I wrapped it around, hot glued it to the other side where I'd measured and then I continued to wrap it around hot gluing it periodically. Now, some of my tips whenever you're wrapping yarn or cord around a canvas, you wanna try to keep the yarn or twine as close as you can. It just gives it much more of a high-end look and it looks a lot more seamless. Now, for this project, you wanna try to keep it as level as possible. That's just gonna help you when you get to the ends. So I wrapped the cord around the middle and then once I got to my other lines that I had marked off, I just hot glued it in place and cut off the excess. Now I'm going to take my other rope and hot glue that to the edge where I just stopped on my center portion. And I'm going to wrap that hot gluing it until I get to the very end. Now, once you get to the end, you wanna start adding in more hot glue just so that it gives it more longevity. It's gonna hold in place when it's hanging on your wall. And I'm going to wrap it around, also making sure to completely cover your canvas. You wanna make sure your canvas is completely covered and then you can hot glue the excess onto the back. 
Once I do one side, I'm going to flip and do the other side. Now I was thinking this project was actually going to take a while, but it went considerably faster than I thought. So if you're hesitant to try it, it really wasn't that long to create. Now you're going to repeat these steps on your second canvas, but you're just going to switch the material. So you're gonna start with your macrame, putting that on in the middle. And then for your edges, you can add on your nautical row. You're gonna follow the same tips by making sure you add it really close together and covering the canvas on either of the edges. I really love this grouping of two. It adds so much texture to my walls. Do any of you have inexpensive spoon rests that you like to leave sitting out so that you can use them on a regular basis, but they may not look the best? I'm gonna show you how I took a spoon rest and really made it super cute and something I can't wait to put out on my countertop. Now you can use any spoon rest you have. I grabbed this wood one off of Amazon. I'll link to it down below, as well as any of the cutting tools, machines that I'm using in this video. I'll link all that down below as well. I'm gonna use my frog painters tape to tape off at a diagonal. Now, the reason I like frog painters tape is it's really one of the best painters tape for making sure that you don't have paint that gets underneath your tape. It just, it works better than the other options. So I, I do really like it for my DIY projects. I'm going to use that same paint that I used on the desk earlier. One of those sample paints and I'm going to put two coats on with a foam brush. I'm making sure that I just put the paint on the top. I don't wanna see it on the side. So I was really careful around the edges. I'm gonna let that completely dry. Once that's dry, I'm gonna come back in and add some more painter's tape at another diagonal line just to give it a little bit of interest. I'm gonna use another sample paint that I have in a darker color and put that on the end. In Cricut Design Space, I wanted to find a piece of trim. I found this border piece that I thought was perfect. I sized it and then I sent it to cut on some white permanent vinyl. I'm going to weed that piece out. Since it's one solid piece, I'll just pull it off the backing and I'll place it onto the edge of my paint line. I used my regular scissors to cut it off so that I didn't have any excess of the vinyl on the edges. I'll just place that firmly on the spoon rest. And here's how adorable it looks sitting out in my kitchen. I'm absolutely blown away with this hanging planter. This one's $5. I may have to switch it out for this one that we got for $3. Look how cool that is, you guys. I gotta get this. Maybe we'll get both. I don't know. We'll just, we'll put them both in here. So for my first project, I'm gonna be making over this $5 macrame plant hanger. Straight out of the box, I think it looks awesome. I think this is a great quality plant hanger on its own but I wanted to add a little bit of color to it. So I had a writ liquid dye in the color royal blue, and I'm gonna mix that with water. Make sure you wear gloves whenever you do this because you don't wanna get the dye on your hands. I'm just gonna mix the dye into my water. The reason that I like to put my dye in water is so that I have more dye and I have more control over the dyeing process. Next, I'm going to simply dip my macrame piece into the dye. Now I did have to put my hand in the middle, hold it down, and I wanted the dye to come up about halfway on the side of the macrame pieces. So I'm just going to push it down until I have the dye exactly where I want it to be. I'm gonna pull it out, place it on a clear piece of plastic, and let it completely dry. And here's how it looks hung up with my IKEA plant. You guys, check out these placemats if you're wanting any like DIY materials. I feel like you could do so much with these. 
I'm gonna grab this white and gray placemat. So I have to be honest, I wasn't sure if this project was going to turn out. So I started by just removing all the tags from the placemat. Next, I wanted to open up the placemat on one side. So I didn't have my seam rippers, so I used one of my Cricut tools just to rip open the seam on one side. And I find that it's best to do this with the side that they stitched last. It usually just comes up better. I'm going to open it up about halfway. This next part, I was a little unsure if it was gonna work out or not because I had to get both of the fabrics away from each other and they kind of pressed them together, but I was able to kind of work it so that I could remove the fabrics without damaging anything. I used one of my scraper tools just to kind of help me separate the fabric. Next, I'm going to be using a lumbar support pillow that I already had on hand to put inside of this placemat. I really love the fabric of this placemat and I thought it would make a great pillow for just $2. Now you could stitch this back up, but I wanted to show you how to do this so easily. So I'm just going to hot glue it together on the sides. You wanna make sure that it's put together really well. If you need to add some additional hot glue, go ahead and do that as well. But look how great this looks as an accent pillow on my couch. I think it looks great either way. Sconces and wall lights are super popular right now. Everybody's wanting to add these into your house, but sometimes you may not know how to wire it in. So I wanna give you an option that you don't have to wire in at all and it's really affordable. So for this project, you're going to need one of their drying racks, a napkin holder from Dollar Tree. You're also going to need two puck lights from Amazon. I'll link them for you down in the description box and a placemat. My placemat, I actually purchased at Walmart. You wanna get your drying rack from Dollar Tree because it's definitely gonna be a little bit more flimsy and bendable. So I'm gonna start with my drying rack, pushing it around my napkin holder to create a nice arch. Once I have it in the right shape, I need to attach the drying rack to my napkin holder. So I started this by adding in some floral wire. And this held it okay, but then I went in with a zip tie and that worked even better to secure it in place. Once you have your base in place, now you can come in and wrap it around the edges. So I found a place mat that fit almost perfectly. I ended up having to cut some of the drying rack down at the bottom. Then I'm just going to wrap the place mat around and I'll hot glue it in the back. I purchased my puck lights in a pack of two. You're gonna to have to put a battery in them to make them work. Now to attach these, you're gonna use the command strips that were provided. I'm gonna put them on the back of my puck lights. Then I'm gonna put one on the top of my napkin holder and the other one, I'm going to flip the sconce upside down and put it on the bottom part of my napkin holder. That way, when they're turned on, you're gonna have light illuminating from the top and the bottom. They're touch lights, so all you have to do is touch them to turn them on. You could also get remote ones that are a little bit more expensive if you wanna go that route as well. To attach these to the wall, all you have to do is put some command strips. And here's how it looks on my wall. This one, you guys, it's a hanging solar light for $5. I have a DIY in mind for this one, but Dollar General has a ton of different options. They have these, which would be nice in your yard. They also have this lantern style. Those are $12. And then these go on your fence posts. So a lot of different options here if you're looking for some solar lights, and they're probably gonna be a cheaper price point than say like Walmart or Amazon.
So for this hanging solar light, I'm gonna start by adding some nautical rope to the very bottom of this solar light. So I just used hot glue around the edges and placed the nautical rope in place. I decided to loop the nautical rope through so one time it would be in the front and the other time it would be in the back on the metal piece. Well, as I was doing this, I realized that it didn't give me the look I was going for, so I decided to take all that out. <clears throat> So I pulled the rope out except for that bottom layer I had already created and I decided to just loop it around the outside. I wasn't sure exactly how far I was going to go up. I just kind of kept going until I was happy with the look of it. Once I was happy with it, I just cut off the excess and hot glued that in place. And here's a look at how this solar light turned out and looks outside on my tree. If you love DIY videos, make sure you're subscribed to my channel. I post new videos on Mondays and Thursdays. My crafting area after the fall and Christmas season is a wreck. It took me a whole day of cleaning it just to kind of get it back to where I could actually like work in it. And I went through all of my craft supplies and was like kind of figuring out what I wanted to get rid of. And one of the things I found was this globe. I probably thrifted this maybe nine months to a year ago and I never did anything with it. And I knew I had to do a project with it. So I started by spraying it completely black. You may have seen this in some high-end stores and globes are a great thing to find at the thrift store. When I was shopping at Dollar Tree, I also noticed that they had a bunch of new stickers out. So next time you go to Dollar Tree, make sure you check that sticker section. And I found these and I thought they would work perfect for my globe. So I'm just gonna take them off and put them on my globe. I think I ended up adding four. I just wanted them to be kind of a subtle accent around the edges. And here's how my globe turned out styled. Have you guys seen containers where people put in longer matchsticks or matchsticks with colors on them? I just find them really appealing. I feel like it's a really cute home decor piece that you can put out with your decor. And I wanted to recreate it for less. So I went to Dollar Tree and picked up some of their clear shower rings. Next, I'm gonna glue these together. So the glue that I'm using is a glue that holds really well and it's gonna have to sit up overnight. So I added some glue around the edges and then put the rings on one by one. Now, once I had it stacked up, I set it to the side and let it dry overnight. Like I didn't do anything to it. When I came back the next day, the glue was bonded really well. Next, I spray painted it with two to three coats of a white flat spray paint. I wanted it to have like a speckledy stone look to it. So I found this spray paint at Walmart. It's called Stone Spray Paint. And it's so cool. When you spray it on, it just gives it this muckledy finish to it. So I just lightly sprayed that on the entire piece. From there, you can add a little bit of filler to the base of this. Then you can add in your matchsticks. I grabbed mine off of Amazon. I'll link them for you in the description box. And I think this looks so cute sitting out next to candles or other decor. Look at these shelves. Okay, these are cute. $10 for this shelf. I like this one. This is another great option as well. These would be great for your bathroom or in your kitchen. 
I wanted to make this a hanging system that you could use for necklaces or jewelry in your closet. I had these leftover hooks. I believe they were from a piece that I got at Ikea and I never used them and I thought they would be perfect for this. So I started by drilling holes into each of the scallops. I drew a line across just to make sure I kept all of my holes at the same level. Then I realized I needed to pull off that front piece in order so I could screw in the knobs. I started by using my drill to put the knobs in the back and then I just screwed the knobs into place. While I had this front piece off, I came in and painted with two coats of Waverly ink on the front and back. I did about one and a half coats. After the first coat was dry, I came back in and added a little bit of paint to anywhere that I missed paint. Since I kept the same existing nails, I was able to just tap this back into place. I ended up using my hammer a little bit as well. Here's how the shelf looks styled. These metal and glass planters are gonna make a really cool DIY. I started by taking the glass planters out of the box and then I went outside and added a flat black spray paint to the top of the planters. And then I flipped them upside down and put some on the backside as well. I wanted to create a base for these planters, so I made a template out of just some craft paper I had on my table. And I'm gonna cut out these rectangles. Now, I wanted these rectangles to fit exactly into the inner portion of my base. So I cut them down until they were the correct size. Next, I'm using some bamboo skewers that I picked up at Dollar Tree. And this was kind of trial by error. So I started by putting hot glue on there and then kind of smooshed the dowel rods together. I realized the hot glue wasn't the best option. So then I decided to use some E6000 and I placed my other template on the other side. And the E6000 worked a lot better. I just needed to get all of these skewers in one row together. I let them dry overnight. Then I could come back in with my handsaw and I cut down one side, measured where I needed to cut on the other side and cut it off with my handsaw. I cut off two bases. And then I added it with E6000 to the bottom of my planter. I put back in the glass piece that came with this planter. And then I'm gonna be using some Dollar Tree stems just to kind of finish it off. You could really put in any plants that you like. I really love how these turned out. You'll have to let me know what you think. I wanted to create a wall art piece and as I was going through my stash of craft supplies, I realized I had a ton of yarn and then I also had a ton of wreath form. So I found this 3D wreath form and I decided to pull off the two larger wreath forms. I actually had two of them, so I ended up with four of the wreath forms. And then I also picked out some neutral yarn that I could use for this project. Now my idea was I wanted to cover half of one of the wreath forms. So I started by hot gluing in the center portion and wrapping it around. 
Now, if you don't continue to hot glue, your yarn's not gonna stay in place very well. I would say every other time you go around, you're gonna have to add some hot glue to the back just to kind of hold that yarn in place. Now, I did that all the way until I got to the end. And again, with the end, you're gonna have to add in quite a bit of hot glue just to hold it in place and make sure you cover that wreath form. Once I got all the yarn on there, I cut it off. Now, that kind of took a while to do. So I decided with my next one, I wanted to start on the outside and see if that was an easier process. So I actually started by hot gluing to the outer edge and then continuing to hot glue until I got to the center. I wanted to let you guys know that it's actually easier to do it that way, to start on the outside and then add the yarn to the middle. So that's how I did the other two. It was kind of like a trial and error, but I just felt like I didn't have to hot glue as much in the middle when I was wrapping as I did on the edge. So I would definitely recommend starting on the edge and working your way in. Now these are so fun to hang in a grouping on your wall. You can use a nail to hold them in place or you can use command strips, but here's how they turned out on my wall. I love the size of this serving tray and I love that it's flat. It's gonna be good for a DIY. I'm gonna grab it for $10. So to DIY this tray, I started with the color Ocean by Waverly, and I'm going to paint that along the outside edge of my tray. I ended up only doing one coat of paint. I didn't tape it off either. I was just really careful to make sure that I didn't get the paint on the inside of the tray. But if you were worried about it, you could always tape it off. I have this huge pack of faux leather that I bought off of Amazon. So I grabbed a darker faux leather piece and I want to create some handles. So I just kind of cut it down until I felt like it was the right size. And then I want it to wrap around one time. So I measured it out, just kind of eyeballing it and cut it off. I'm gonna cut two pieces that are the same size. Next, I'm gonna come in and hot glue the inner portion and then I'll hot glue and wrap it around and I'll repeat this on the other side. Now I love trays like this on my coffee table, but I also think they look really good sitting out on my dining room table. I added some thrifted vases with water and some Dollar Tree stems in there, and you guys will have to let me know how you think this centerpiece turned out. I was excited to find these little terrariums. They look like light bulbs. I really couldn't figure them out, but I knew I had to get three of them. Now I wasn't a fan of the gold piece at the top, so I decided I was gonna wrap that with some nautical rope. And don't worry, all the supplies I'm using, I'll link for you down in the description box, plus what I'm wearing. So I started at the base, wrapping around the nautical rope and hot gluing it in place. When I got to the top, I just cut it off and then continued to wrap it around. I did this for all three of my terrariums. Next, I decided to add some white rocks to the base of these. And then I also at Dollar Tree picked up some succulents. This is a great time of year to start buying them because this is when they put them out. And by spring, I feel like all of their succulents are gone. So I'm just gonna pull them out of their bases and put them into the rocks. Now to hang these, I'm gonna use some thinner twine that I had.
and I'll just hang them at various levels. And here's how these terrariums turned out. Ooh, I love this one, this jute twine. Oh my goodness. Okay, so this is $2.87. I'm thinking we get a couple of these and do a wall hanging DIY. So I think I'm gonna grab, let's grab three. I have a DIY in mind using a bunch of Walmart yarn. They have a whole aisle so you can pick any color you like. Love this yarn, think it's gonna be great with our placemats. I think these placemats are so cute on their own, but I wanted to create a wall hanging with them. So I'm just gonna start by removing the tags that are on the back. I also grabbed some yarn that's a little bit thicker that I'm gonna use for this project as well. So I laid them out and I want to connect them with the yarn. So I measured out how long I wanted the pieces to be, then I kind of tied them in place. Once I held that up, I realized that did not look good. So we needed plan B. So I decided to just hot glue the yarn to the back and make sure you couldn't see it from the front. Now I measured out the distance that I put the top one so that I could do the exact same thing to the bottom one. And I just put yarn pieces in as well. Now that ended up looking so much better. I added some additional construction style adhesive glue and some tape just to really hold it in place so that when I hung it on my wall, it wouldn't go anywhere. And the tape I'm using, it looks like painter's tape, but it's really duct tape. I also created a little hanger at the top. I wanted to paint on these placemats, so I found a plate that was like almost a perfect size circle. So I put that on the center one and traced around the plate. Now for the top portion, I wanted to create a half circle and then I wanted to create a half circle at the bottom going the opposite direction. I'm gonna be using a green paint that I already had on hand. Now, whenever you're painting on fabric or something like this, like jute, you actually have to use quite a bit of paint because the fabric soaks up the paint quite a bit, but I'm just using a two inch angled brush to kind of get around the edges and just follow the lines that you created, making sure that you cover those lines. Once I put the paint on, I realized it was way too green. I did not like the color. So then I decided, okay, let's try moss green. No, I didn't like that. So then I mixed the moss green <laughs> with a little bit of gray and didn't really like that either. I ended up going with a kind of bluish turquoise color. So don't be afraid of paint, you guys. You can always paint over stuff. I just go for it and I try it. And if it doesn't work out, I can always change the color. And here's how it looks hanging up on my wall. I'm glad that I ended up changing it to the blue because that green was just not working out. So when I was shopping at Dollar Tree, I found these incense containers that I thought were really cute. I also grabbed some glass jars. So I wanted to make these instant containers lids for my jars. So they actually fit on there very nicely. So I'm gonna start by filling the incense hole at the top with some wood filler. I'll let that dry completely. Next, I'm going to spray paint the lids. I decided to go with a navy color, but you could go with any color that fits the color scheme of your bathroom. And I'm gonna start by spray painting them on the bottom. 
Once that dries, I'll come in and spray two coats on the top. Next, all you have to do is fill up your glass jars with any bathroom items that you want to put in there and just put the lids on top. These are going to look so cute sitting out in your bathroom and be totally functional as well. Next, I wanted to show you an inexpensive wall art piece. Now I've saved a ton of money by using my Cricut machine to create some of my wall art pieces. For this project, you're gonna need 11 by 14 frames. These are ones I already had on hand from Walmart, as well as two black poster boards. Recently, I learned how to do the foil technique on Cricut, and I have to tell you, I was really nervous to do this at first. I thought, oh, that's gonna be so tricky, so hard. I definitely want to show you guys how easy it was to do so that maybe you might wanna try it in a future project. Again, I'm gonna be using a graphic from the design space because Cricut has some really cool foil designs. I'm gonna pull that up into the design space. Now, the thing with this one is you have to pull down the menu that says that you're planning to foil it instead of cutting it. That's really key here whenever you're doing foiling. Once I size my image the way I want, I'm going to send it to the cutting machine. Now, you are going to need a couple more tools for this. Cricut has a special blade called the foil transfer kit. You're gonna need that blade but it's really easy. All you have to do is pull out your old blade and put this one in. It's really easy to change out. Now for your mat, let me show you how to put that together. You're going to use your 12 by 12 mat and you're gonna start by putting down a poster board. Now my poster boards, I cut down so that they were 11 by 14 and I created two of them. I'm gonna put the 11 by 14 black poster board down on my mat. Then I'm gonna take a 12 by 12 foil sheet and put it down over the black poster board. One of the things I recommend is to tape down the foil around the edges. This is going to help keep it in place while it's in the cutting machine. So once you do that, all you have to do is load it into your machine, set it to cut. It's gonna ask you like what materials you're using, if you have the right cutting tools, and then you can cut it out. You can remove the foil after it's done cutting, and I have to tell you, it looks so cool. I absolutely love it. I did create a second one, but I did it as a mirror image from my first one. I went in and cut out both of my posters so I didn't have that border line. And then I traced and cut out another 11 by 14 frame. I E6000 my poster board to the other poster board, kind of just creating like a black mat to it. And then I put them back into my frames. I think they look so elegant. You could really customize this. You could change the colors of it to be whatever colors work for you. But I love the way these frames turned out. When I'm at Dollar Tree, I always walk past those green wreath forms and I don't ever pick them up, but I thought, you know what? I'm gonna grab a stack of these and do a DIY with them. So we're gonna turn these wreath forms into a vase slash planter that I've seen on a bunch of different high-end sites. So I'm gonna start by taking off the tags that are on there. Luckily, these came off pretty easily. So I wanna stack them up. So this is really easy to do. I'm just going to hot glue and stack them on. Now you wanna make sure that you concentrate your glue on the inside so you don't see glue on the outside. That never looks good. Now I started by putting some E6000 with it, but as I was going up, I realized that hot glue would work just as well. As I was stacking them, I added some additional hot glue to the inside for added support.
Next, I'm going to take this outside. I ended up doing three coats of a cream colored spray paint on here because this is foam. So it's going to absorb that spray paint and just kind of soak it up. So you're going to have to do probably three heavy coats on here. So I just did three coats, letting them dry in between. I'm gonna put this on my spray paint turnstile I bought. I'll link it for you guys down in the description box. I just purchased this and it's so cool. I love it for spray painting. Now to give it kind of that higher end look, I found this spray paint called Stone and that is going to give a cool speckledy look. So I'm just gonna spray one coat all along the edge. A little of this goes a long way. So you don't wanna spray a ton of it. Once that had a chance to dry, you can put any stems in here, but I wanted to use the Dollar Tree just to kind of show you guys how you could do this with Dollar Tree items. So I'm gonna fill the bottom. You could put in really anything, Walmart sacks, Dollar Tree sacks work great. And then Dollar Tree has several new spring stems out. These are the ones that I picked up and I'm just going to place those in my container. Now, if you want more of like a long arrangement, you can do that as well, but you'll probably have to pick those up at like Walmart or Hobby Lobby. And here's how this planter turned out. grab embroidery hoops at Walmart. I have an idea for an embroidery hoop DIY. So for this project, you're going to need two embroidery hoops. You're also going to need yarn. This is yarn I already had on hand, and you're also going to need some beads. This is really a project you could change up with things that you had on hand. I'm gonna separate the embroidery hoops because I just want to use the pieces that don't have the clamp on there. So I'm gonna start by lacing on some beads with my yarn. I'm using a toothpick to help me thread the yarn through. Next, I'm gonna wrap it around my larger hoop and tie it in place. But I do my best to bring Dreams of green and filled with this life is so Then I'm gonna add an additional bead and then wrap around the smaller hoop and tie that in place. I'm gonna add a few more beads, tie that in place. I wanted to create a loop at the top so that I could hang this on the wall. I love creating pieces like this because you can really just change the look of it so much by adding different colored yarn or just changing the beads that you add on there. Now I wanted to make this yarn fluffy. I tried to use a hairbrush, that didn't work. So I ended up using this comb that was in one of my makeup brush sets and that worked okay, but wasn't my favorite. I kind of scrapped that look and just started adding additional yarn pieces to create a little tassel at the bottom. I didn't want to have a huge tassel, but just a little bit of yarn hanging down. I'll be fine and you'll be gone when nothing's like and I'll cut that off so it's even. Next, I wrapped some yarn pieces around one of my cutting mats so they were all the same size. And then I'm going to add those to the bottom of my embroidery hoop. I brushed them all out so that I could cut it at the bottom. I didn't want to cut them straight across, so I just kind of did a swoop. You guys, these jute placemats, you get two of them for $3. So I think these placemats would be perfect to add to these decorative baskets. I love these black decorative baskets. So let's do a DIY.
So I started by putting my basket on top of the placemat and I'm just going to roughly draw around it with a Sharpie. Then I'm gonna cut it out going a little bit inside of my Sharpie line. Now I knew this was gonna be a little too large for the bottom of it, but it was okay. I wanted to just kind of cut it down and then I was just going to cut additional off once I had a chance to actually set it inside the basket. So I did that till I was happy with it and then I hot glued it to the base. Now I repeated this step for both of my baskets. I love adding a little bit of texture or pattern to the bottom of baskets because I feel like it just completely changes the look of this. Now because these are so decorative, I thought they would be great sitting out in my living room, maybe with some blankets in it, or you know when your kids throw all of the pillows on the floor, you could put those in there as well. I've been finding myself cutting a lot of lately are the stickers in Cricut Design Space. My girls love stickers. They want to put them on their devices, on their water bottles, notebooks, pretty much everywhere. And I love that I can create them with my Cricut. For this project, you're going to need to get the printable sticker paper. Now you can use your own stickers. I like to use the ones that are in Design Space. I pulled them up. The one that I'm going to use actually comes with a sheet of six different stickers. Now you can print them out on your normal normal printer. So that's what I did first. I started by putting the paper into my printer and I printed out all six sheets. Once you do that, then you're simply going to add the sticker paper to a mat, put it into your Cricut Explore 3. The Cricut Explore 3 actually has sensors to detect the sticker lines and it's going to help with a more accurate cut whenever you're cutting them out and I'll do that with all six of my stickers. From there, it's really simple. All you have to do is just pull the stickers up like you would on a normal sticker sheet. I'm gonna decorate a notebook with these Cricut stickers. They're so adorable, perfect for summer or back to school. They're like little leather you call them lanterns maybe i would probably put candles in here but we found two of these these are just too good to pass up let's diy them so I ended up finding three and I was trying to figure out what I wanted to do with them. I ended up deciding to put succulents in them. So I had these natural stone rocks that I picked up at Dollar Tree and I'm gonna fill the containers up with these rocks because I wanted these to look kind of neutral and earthy. Then I went in my big container of greenery and succulents trying to figure out what was going to work best in here. I settled on these round succulents and I did them all the same. Now to hold them on the wall, I went with that same hunter dark green color. You guys have probably recognized this is a very popular in trend color right now. So I'm just gonna wrap some yarn, tie it in place. And then when I go to hang it, I'll just tie it at the top. So I repeated this for all three of my containers. I was so impressed with these containers. Dollar General really has some great items that you can use to create high-end decor pieces. And here's how they all look hung up. Mm -hmm. 